Premier League. And that is a 1-0 win for Palace, who incidentally have won four times at Anfield uh, in the Premier League era, which is more than any other team. Uh, that, of course, after Manchester City had done their five-star show on Saturday amongst those goals. that also included that 4-0 win for Newcastle and a return to winning ways for Brentford. It's just finished at the London Stadium, where Fulham have won away at West Ham for the first time since the year England won the World Cup hmm. in 1966. Fulham, with two goals from Andreas Pereira, have beaten West Ham there by two goals to nil. As we've said, Arsenal-Villa to come. And, of course, the Monday Night Football and Matchday Live. And final word, as Everton have a huge game away at Chelsea. And Everton, as I say, do have a huge game because they're still looking over their shoulders. Uh, that gap is just two points between themselves and Luton. But look at the one for Palace now. Up to 33. Eight clear of the drop zone and still with a game in hand. Fulham, Fulham up to 42 points in 12th. That's the bottom. But look at this. Manchester City and Arsenal fans will be delighted to see Liverpool still on 71 points. Just their third defeat all season. And they've missed the opportunity to go top of the table. They have six to play. It is not in their hands. It is in Arsenal's, who, of course, play next at home to Villa. Arsenal win. Then they are back on top of the pile. In fact, Michael, that is just the second time in 58 home Premier League games that Liverpool have lost a game. Really does put that into context. It does. I mean, they're so good. They have been for so long at home. Um, it's a real difficult one for Liverpool fans, Liverpool players uh, to take. In fact, it's been a horrific week, actually. I mean, you know, Liverpool were, were looking so good not so long ago, maybe even winning four trophies. Um, but now it looks like, you know, it could only be one. You know, they're really struggling in the Europa League. Um, that is a bit of blow in the, in the title race. And if Arsenal go and press home that advantage, uh, as I say, in a couple of hours, then, you know, Liverpool fans will be praying for a little bit of a miracle then. Uh, Manchester City, they've been here, they've seen it, they've done it. They don't make many mistakes at this stage of the season. And Arsenal don't look as if they're going to make many mistakes <coughs> either, so they're right on the back foot now. Liverpool had enough chances to win two or three games there, though, today, didn't they? Yeah, that's, what, that's like I say, that's the biggest worry. It wasn't, <coughs> excuse me, it wasn't half chances, Steve. It was proper chances. And you have to give Palace credit because they defended really well, but Liverpool did open them up and make the kind of chances that you have to take. It's not... We're not thinking, oh, that was unfortunate, that was unlucky. You know, I think this one was because I thought he'd done well athletically to get himself up there. Goalkeeper's made a great save. And then when you're seeing stuff like that, you're thinking it might be one of those days. But that's not the kind of miss where you're thinking it might be one of those days. But I think that this, for me, is a miss where you're thinking, because that's a miss. A goalkeeper's not meant to have no chance when a striker's got that. Look at how much time and space he's got. Just put the ball in the net, just put his side foot in there. The goalkeeper's on his heels. It's just, for me, it's just very, very poor at this stage of the season for a team going... This one here, look, Mike. You know? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, Don Hutchison mentioned it in, uh, in commentary. I've always hated that analogy, just hit the target. Like, yeah. Because we're better than that, yeah. surely. Yeah. I mean, did you ever just think hit the target? No, always good going for the sides. Go for corners. Look at this one. I mean, it's just poor finishing. We highlighted it before the, the game today. Um, the last five games of Liverpool, the finishing's been awful. Mm. Uh, and it continued today, whether it's confidence in front of goal, whether it's a, a, the wrong choices. It's probably a bit of both because there were certainly some wrong choices today. Um, and, you know, finishing is about being calm. You know, everybody else gets excited. Yeah. As a centre forward, you can't get excited. You've got to go cold. Mm. You've got to go steely. You've got to shut everything out and think, what have I got to do here? To... And it's not panicking and striking yeah. it as hard as you can. That's for defenders, that's for people in the crowd, that's what they would do. <laughs> Centre forwards, that's why they get paid the most money. That's why the big <laughs> transfers, because in those big moments, they need to deliver under the greatest of pressure. And unfortunately, Liverpool, in the last five games... They've panicked in front of goal a lot of the time. They're slashing at things, they're hitting the target, they're just smacking it into the goalkeeper. It, that's not good enough at this level. You've got to find corners, you've got to be cool. Which is why I sometimes struggle to remember that you were strikers, you're both so warm that I can't <laughs> understand the, the coldness in front of goal. Um, Palace's goal, I mean, this is a Liverpool and title story, but full credit to Crystal Palace. Right. Seventh game under the new manager, mm. only his second win, his plan worked. Yeah. 
He's obviously got them playing there. I can imagine the training sessions must be really good because everybody's moving around and, and, and you can see the touches. Sometimes it's, it's just one touch, just laying off. Centre half come and get involved. You know, he's, he's only been there a while, but you can see that he's got something going with them. Look at the confidence there of Anderson. Good ball out. You know, no rush to try and bam and get it in the box to a big Mateta. It comes back out. They get it going again right from the start. It's going to come back out. You know, it's patient. You know, this is what we didn't see this with, with Roy Hodgson, this kind of patience in the way that they're playing, trying to play it like now. Look, bang, one touch, one touch, one touch, in. You know, and then again, you're thinking, OK, is this going in? And look at Eze on his own. You know, so they work that chance. Who doesn't smash they move it? Huh? Who doesn't smash it? Who didn't it? smash it? Because in that, That's like point, Michael's saying, you get into that situation and you go calm. Look at Eze. You know, the chance is what we've seen. You know, this would, this would be another unbelievable miss. But at the same time, look at how calm he is once this comes out. Look at him. Look, bang. Bang. You know, slot. Yeah. I mean, Highlighted end, though, though. I mean, Liverpool, were Liverpool vulnerable? Well, they took him out of position. Mm. I mean, of course, he's your, he's your pivot player. He's one that sniffs out any danger. Really, he would mark areas and protect that back four. But if there's a bit of a crisis, then he's got to leave his and vacate his position. And he felt that was the, the case, so he had to go wide. It left a, a big space in the middle. And, Liverpool, and uh, Palace exploited it. Yes. I mean, that goal there was something that if you, if you, swi you, know, if you switched it round, you'd be saying, that's a brilliant Liverpool goal. Mm. That's what you would expect from them at, at Anfield. One-touch passing. You don't normally expect the away team to be doing that to them. And, uh, the, and full credit to them. You know what it was, Steve, is that they, I don't think they were expecting Palace to pass it around with that consistency and that calmness. And it just pull, pulled players out of position. And then in the end, they were calm enough to keep it going, get to the byline, bam, type it in. Beautiful goal. OK, so Palace win, Liverpool lose. Here is some Liverpool reaction from Andy Robertson. Andy, so wasteful in front of goal against Manchester United and a repeat of that here at Anfield this afternoon. Yeah, it's been the story of the last couple of games. Um, and that's why, we've been, that's why we've been punished in these games, you know. We are struggling to keep clean sheets just now. Um, I don't know what, you know, how many we've had in the last 10, 15 games, but it won't be many. And when you do that, and you, but you're still creating that many chances, then we have to take them. Simple as that. Um, the boys in front of goal have to do better, but the boys at the back, you know, as a, well, as a defensive unit as a whole, we have to do better. And as an attacking unit, we have to do better, which isn't a great, um, which isn't a great um, you know, thing for its success. So, yeah, you know, so frustrating today. So many chances. First half, I thought we were we were poor. Um, I thought they were on top. Yeah, they could have probably been more than more than one nil up. Second half, we had enough chances to win probably two or three games. Which you know, when you're in a tight race, you have to be clinical, and we, we weren't that today. Just wondering, Andy, when you say it's been the story so far, where's that story come from? Yeah, it's only just been really lately since we've came back from international duty. We've probably not been as clinical in front of goal. Um, which, like I said, is when you're going for titles and you're going for trophies, it's not. You know, it's not a great thing to have. So, you know, we're obviously off the boil in front of goal. That's that's clear. You know, now we've had two games, one in the Europa League, one in um, one in the league, and no goals at Anfield, which is you know very very rare. And uh, and we've been punished for it. Which, when you get to this late part of the season, you know you can't really do because you get punished. And now, you know, obviously the teams about us will win games. And um, yeah, but. You know, today's now, unfortunately, a lot of regrets, obviously, in the change room, which we didn't want at the, the start of the day. Um, but, yeah, like we have to move on, and, and that's the only thing we can do now. As you say, back-to-back -back defeats at Anfield is very rare. It doesn't happen very often. The manager, before the match, uh, was talking about wanting to see a response. Why hasn't that response gone to plan? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know, you know, when... I don't know if some, you know, you know, I thought, you know, the crowd were quite anxious today, and rightly so, the way we were passing the ball. We kept giving it away and kept giving chances, and I don't know if maybe players reacted off that, maybe players that aren't as experienced as, um, you know, we've been in the tight race and things like that, but we're all quality players, you know, that's why you're at Liverpool Football Club, and we have to deal with that pressure. First half, I don't think we dealt with very well. Second half, I thought we were better, especially by creating chances in front of goal, but, you know, we didn't take them. Simple as that. I think all our strikers had a chance, and, um, you know, if you don't take them, then you get punished, and... Yeah, we definitely had enough chances to win the game today and it's, uh, you know, extremely frustrating. Andy Robertson echoing your point on chances. Let me give you some figures, Michael. 149 shots Liverpool have had in the last six Premier League games. How many goals have they scored from those 149 shots? Not too many. Ten? Nine. Mm. Yeah, it's... Uh... 
Well, again, we highlighted it before the game. I mean, you know, preparation for a, for a goal is, is, is really important as well. And a lot of the time, the last pass in previous games has, has been weak. It's been under hit. It's been behind the player. It then makes the finish harder. You know, you're trying to maximise the chance always when you, when you get into the final third. And if the last ball is good, if it's in the right area, if it's at the right pace, then, of course, you make it easier for the, for the person that's going to... And that's been poor in, in recent times. Today, you know, the, the final pass wasn't so bad. It was, a lot of it was the finishing. Um, it was the final touch. It was playing safe in front of goal. And I get it. When, when you're not in a good vein of form, you can play safe. It's quite... You take somebody that's really brave, you know, in front of millions and millions of people around the world and 50-something thousand people in the stadium... Sometimes just to play safe is, is quite a comforting thing to do, but that's what separates the, the best from the rest, yeah. really. And the likes of Mo Salah, that's why they are so good. Because normally in those situations, they can, you know, they can, uh, they can be better than the others, but not today, unfortunately. No. Field. Incredible game to, to watch at Anfield. One of those games where the pattern of play made it feel as though this was a significant one in terms of their, their title race because Liverpool had chances, they just didn't convert them, Jamie. So many chances. It feels like they could be here till next week and still wouldn't have scored. It just wasn't your day. And that is football sometimes. We are saying off air, it's cruel. It doesn't always go your way. You don't always get what you deserve. As I said, full, full credit to Crystal Palace, but Liverpool missed a host of chances, guilt edge chances. Some of it great defending from Crystal Palace, some for slum sloppy finishing from Liverpool. But that's been symptomatic of them this last few weeks and you this level when it gets to the end of the season Paul was talking at the start of the show this is where you've got to be clinical this is where you've got to take your chances and all Palace had to do in this game was take one of the chances that, that they created and, and they did it Colo. absolutely they did it but I think the mistake come from the from the Liverpool midfield because uh, their three midfields get attracted by, by the ball and when the ball gets on the side there there's no midfield there just to to stop easy to score the goal it's too easy you know, we can we, we see that there, Jones, McAllister, Endo, uh, they all attract by the ball in one side there. You know, you need tactically to be disciplined as a midfield. You know, Van Dijk wants to go there, but he's, he's thinking, you know, I have to be careful because if the ball gets to, to the striker there, it's, it's dangerous. He can't jump on an easy and then easy goal, in my opinion. We talked about some of the, the chances that Liverpool missed in this game. As Jamie said, variety of reasons for why the ball didn't go in mm. the net. But, Paul, you, you start to think it's just not meant for you, this game. Yeah, you, you can't think like that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's a bad finish. I mean, just, they just a, a lot of them are bad finishes. I know people are saying, good like this is a good block. It's not really a good block. The lad's just got his body there. He hasn't moved. He just stood still. You know, and other days they go in. It was one of them days. This is... That's a big miss, it's, you know, either corner. He, he, about this yeah, one, Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones, again, yeah, I think, I think the lad Wharton does well here. He keeps on chasing him back, puts him under a little bit of pressure, but he, again, got to score. You know, they can't keep on falling behind. You can't keep on going to the world. You know, what Jamie said before, 23 games. Don't you Salah. can't keep on doing that. You know, Salah here, kick, the, 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 it hits his toe. I mean, any other time, he just rolled it in the corner. It's... It's bad finishing, you know, and it's come back. It looks like it's going to come back to bite him because they've got a natural goal scorer. You know, that's pro Arsenal's problem as well. You hope that ain't going to be Arsenal's thing that comes back to bite him in the end. You know, Man City have got a natural goal scorer and they're top of the league at the moment. So, yeah, yeah I'm disappointed for Liverpool. I feel sorry for them. You know, you go 30 on games, 31 gets to 32 and you're, you're near on out of it now. Neutrals today, right now, who they fancy? They would all, they, I would say, neutrals I'm talking about, I would say 90% would say Man City. Do you think? Yes, I do. Look at City's run. I do think that because City have got that, but I, I, I mean, that would be one of the 10%. Obviously, it still thinks Arsenal can do it, but it won't be easy. Listen, City have got the recipe. We don't know about Arsenal's mentality. No. That they've learned from last season, and they're here again. Look at there's your Jace. Look at that. That's what Keezy's talking about. Look at you. Your next, you've got a week. You're away at Atalanta midweek, and then you've got away, away, away. Three away games. So you're playing four away games. Right I, off I, the I'm back. with you. I'm, I'm totally with you. Mm. I, and I think what Richard said is is right. Listen, this team, it's a rebuild. They've yeah. never been in this situation, but they're also within what's going on now. They've never been in this situation where they've got to pick themselves up, mentally find something. How long before somebody mentions that you were in four competitions when Klopp announced he was leaving? 
Uh, you've just mentioned it. Oh, I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say no. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's, that's had the impact, no. I, I think what you've said there, that, you know, in sport, you use, they've hit the wall. Usually when it's runners, isn't it? They've hit the wall, they've just got nothing left in the tank. I wouldn't say they've hit the wall and it's come to a standstill. I think they've hit the wall and they're really wounded and they're just, they're kind of going to hobble over the line now. I agree with you, third favourites. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's enough in the tank to come back from the expectation of wanting to get to Dublin for the final of the Europa League and seeing out the title for Jürgen. Maybe that expectation has taken them out physically and mentally. It's taken too much out of them. The Man United result last week, yeah. I think, was really a blow, a massive blow to yeah, create all them chances and yeah, not win the game. So United did deny them the title in the end then? <laughs> it was the start of the end. This um, opposition penalty area. But the most important statistic is Crystal Palace lead by a goal to nil. And that means, as it stands, no change at the top. It would be City still leading before Arsenal have the opportunity to play later. Massive second half ahead here for Liverpool, having gone behind to a very good Palace performance in that first half. Yeah, they have been exceptional. Um, the goal was, uh, was reflective of that performance, really. It was a brilliant goal. Uh, and Crystal Palace had a few other chances as well. They played particularly well. The only thing for Liverpool going in uh, at half-time is they've been here before many times this season. They've got more points from uh, losing positions than anyone in the Premier League. But look at this. This is from a th their own throw-in. Crystal Palace's throw-in on this near side. There was a little bit of a touch, I think, at some point from McAllister that, that made it, you know, that you wouldn't start counting. But it was 20, 21 passes without that touch. We even see a centre-half here, Anderson, spraying it out wide and, and getting into the box. So they're happy to flood uh, players forwards into the box. Uh, Anderson eventually... Those nice little one-touch moves, but it's Eze having that much space in the box. You can see Endo's in there chasing Mitchell here. And I don't know who's meant to be picking up Eze, but they've totally left him. And to be honest, it was a brilliant move. Very calm in, in possession, composed Palace. Brilliant goal. Wow, says Jurgen Klopp. For the fourth time in five home Premier League games, Liverpool concede first. And less than four minutes later, it was very nearly even worse, writing. Yeah, because like Palace can see that they've got a little they've got they've got something. They can get something out of this game. They break really well here, but it's when Virgil's Virgil van Dijk slips there. And I think that Mateta doesn't do too much wrong. Of course, obviously it doesn't go in, so you think he should have hit it harder, but the way he's got that over the keeper. The way he's gone into it, he's had some free, really good touches here to the point where the ball slowed down well enough for him to just dink it. And so Robertson has to get maximum amount of credit for that because that is, he's not done much wrong there, Mateta. It's a really good effort from him, but Robertson's done a world-class um, save That's there. how close it was, Michael. Yeah, very close. I agree with Wrighty. Mateta, I didn't think, did anything wrong. You know, sucked the goalkeeper out, dived at his feet, dinked it over him. Um, he did everything right. It was just very unfortunate. But they've been a threat. We saw the first goal was build-up play. Lots and lots of passes. We saw a counter-attack there. They mixed it up really well. And Crystal Palace have caused Liverpool yeah. all kinds of trouble. And we mentioned, we mentioned it before. The, it's only the fifth time that Eze and, and Elise have started all season. Yeah, together. this one as well, Tudders, is, is, again, it's, it's a poor run from Mateta. Just stay on side here. You know what I mean? Great play from Palace. But then you look at them when they win this. Bang, they're in. And from here, super play. Super play from him. Good pass here from Walton. And it's this pass here, just a bit too hard, I yeah. think, because he's running full pace and the ball's coming at pace. It's very tough for him, Mike. Yeah, no, it was. It was just the pace of the pass. But as you say, there's so much variety from, yeah. from Crystal Palace. I think Liverpool, Don Hutchison made, mentioned it in, uh, in commentary. I think they'll be delighted with half-time just to come to, right, reset now. How are we going to go about this? Uh, Jurgen Klopp has got options on, on the bench as well to change things. Um, so it'll be interesting what happens there, but Palace will go in very, very happy. And if anything, they look the more dangerous. Yeah, Liverpool did at least respond um, and did have a couple of chances. Hit the woodwork and one very good save from Dean Henderson. Yeah, I mean, the, the woodwork here was, was a little bit of a melee, uh, a missed kick from, from Endo. Um, but that was the closest they, they got, really. Um, you know, they have been dangerous, actually, off set pieces this season, Liverpool, but um, that would have been a... You know, a scruffy goal, let's say, but this is a fantastic move. 
great ball from Robertson. And I thought Diaz did amazingly well to get that. What a save, mm. a reaction save that is from Henderson. Mm. That, was, uh, that was in the back of the net, I thought. But that's a great save. But apart from that, it's been all Crystal Palace, really. Certainly has. And Liverpool have it all to do. When Ez is in the pocket there, Jones goes to close him down. He plays it, then Jones just goes and tracks it. It should stay with Eze, because Wharton's not the danger. He's never going to get it. And because the way Eze just strolls into the box, he catches nobody's eye. If he comes sprinting into the box 100 mile an hour, you get a centre half and go pick him up or, or will come out. And he just strolls in. It's, 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 brilliant move. it's brilliant, brilliant movement. People sometimes want to run 100 mile an hour and they get in there too quick. He just, just glided in there and it's a good finish. Great pick out by Mitchell as well. But defensively, Liverpool have allowed Crystal Palace plenty of opportunities in this game. Absolutely, absolutely. When you're fighting for the title, uh, title race, you know, you cannot make You can't slip. Exactly, yeah, but that's, that's something that can happen. But I think for me, I want to talk about the first goal still, you know, is we have three midfield there moving, to, you know, in the side of the ball there. And then there's so many space behind there, you know. And I think that Liverpool have to defend better if they really want to keep uh, fighting for that title race. And look, absolutely. as much as this is great defending by, by Andy Robertson and, and saves Liverpool from going 2-0 going down, you don't want it to get to that, that kind of extreme a circumstance when you're, you're having to pull it, pull it out of the bag. Absolutely, especially when you play against a team who, who, have, who defensively play 5-4-1, very difficult to break them. You have to make sure that you don't concede easy goals and you don't give them chance like that because if they score... Liverpool attacking the cop end second half. They've got a huge part to play, and I still feel that Liverpool will win this game, but they need to do a lot better. Than a lot. I'm Derek Ray. I'm joined for commentary by former Arsenal fullback Lee Dixon, and without doubt, a match with the potential to bring genuine excitement. It's Luton Town taking on Chelsea. Hi, right, Derek. Thank you. Well, both managers will be reminding their players how important. Well, it could be on for him here. Is it going to be? Keeper getting the touch. And it's gone behind for the corner. Over it comes. Not did his job defensively. And they'll get ready for the throw-in. Pearson. So after that, a goal kick it'll be. Well, pick your adjective where Hakim Ziyech is concerned. Explosive, I think, might be in a... Can they take the lead here? And mistimed the run, sadly. That's offside. Throw-ins given. This looks promising. Well, it's the care and attention, all that works. And a blunder by the keeper. Werner. Promising attack, but his timing was off. Well, they've lost possession of the ball. Nicely cut out. Oh, that's an interesting pass. Ziyech. In it goes. An early goal. No wonder they're celebrating. Well, as we look at this again, the keeper's every right to ask where his back line was, but 2v1 in the end. He's thinking now, is he going to pass or go round me? He's got no chance. Well, real difficulty keeping the ball. Ball's gone. 